Hello dear people and welcome to yet another exciting -ish episode about aviation history and gaming right here on Joe Mayday's TV channel. And today we look into historical stats and some technical stats about the F4U-1D Corsair. The aircraft was designed by the Vogue company, which was founded in 1917 by a student of the Wright brothers, Chance Milton Vogue and Birthday B. Lewis. And in 1939 the company merged with the famous Sikorsky Corporation. But let's get back to one year prior than this, to 1938. The United States Navy issued a request for proposal for two different types of fighters, one with two engines and one single engine fighter. And the design of the single engine aircraft was entrusted to a certain Rex Beazel, I hope I pronounced that right. And on May 29, 1940 the first prototype rolled from the production line. It was designated XF4U and it became the fastest single engine of its time in US inventory. It was powered by a single Pratt & Whitney R2800 engine, the Double Wasp, with 18 cylinders and 2200 horsepowers. And combined with its huge propeller, the aircraft made a distinctive sound when flying, earning itself a notorious nickname of Whistling Death. The aircraft went into production in 1942 and the production lasted up until 1952, so whole 10 years. And in that time period, 12,681 units were built. The aircraft was primarily designed for the Navy and for the use on the aircraft carriers, but it was also quite extensively used by the United States Marine Corps. And it saw combat from Guadalcanal to Solomon Islands. But its combat debut le left a lot to be desired, because the first engagement versus the Japanese, more agile Japanese fighters is actually referred to as the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. But certain lessons were made and learned from this engagement and pretty soon Americans adopt their tactics and the Corsair became actually quite a formidable foe. And what exactly have they learned? Well, from the words of uh, a famous American fighter pilot with 21 aerial victories, Kenneth A. Welsh. The Americans quickly learned that the altitude is paramount that you absolutely have to have an altitude advantage over your enemies. And he states that the F4U could outperform the Zero in almost every aspect of combat. But you absolutely must avoid the low speed turning engagements versus the Zeros and other Japanese planes. And this comes from a man that scored 17 aerial victories versus the Zeros. So he probably does know what he's talking about. In all, pilots of this aircraft claimed an astonishing 12 to 1 kill to death ratio versus the Zeros and a 6 to 1 ratio versus the P-84s, NYKs and J-2Ms. And one could go on about this aircraft for many many more minutes or even hours, but this history part is over for now and let's see how it performs in the game in the hands of a not so brilliant pilot. Yours truly, Joe Mayday. And here we are in an instant action of War Thunder's aerialistic battles. And this has happened because I have forgotten to press the record button on time. But nevertheless, here we are giving chase to this BF-109E. And we have descended from altitude because all of the action was going on low on the deck. And now we have started to engage the enemy. Some hits, critical hit. And we are off to the vertical once again to conserve our energy, to convert our speed into altitude. Now the Corsair is actually not a turner, as I have already mentioned before. But he is extremely fast aircraft and a solidish climber for his BR. But we are once again in the position to attack and those are some heavy misses on the BF-109. But we do get another chance just now. And the enemy is out, making it the first kill for the Corsair in this game. Now recently I have played a lot with the P-39s and different versions of the P-39s. And the aircraft feels completely different than the Corsair, for example. The Corsair is much heavier aircraft 
It has an excellent top speed, but it's much heavier, much more sluggish aircraft. And I actually do believe that it takes a lot of time to get used to it. At least for me. I guess it all comes down to personal preference. But for me, I like my aircraft a bit more agile. And I do find Corsair really challenging to play. I actually don't know why. I have seen many videos, many other players who play brilliantly with this aircraft. But I actually prefer the P-39s and even the P-40s over this aircraft. And that is pretty strange, but still, it's my personal preference. But let's get back to the game. We are off on a climb and this will take some time, so let's skip ahead a bit. And so here we are back, but there appears to be an enemy in front of us, finally. It is a enemy F4U, a premium plane of the Japanese tree. And we have started to engage the enemy. And he's closing down on our friendlies. He has a massive energy advantage over them. So we have to rush in and hopefully disrupt its plans. But as you can see, the enemy is quite fast. And he took out one of the friendlies. We have lost all the web. We lost it before in that climb and then reclimbing again. But we are gaining on the enemy. And now he's making a sharp right turn. And we can engage him head on, score some critical hits, roll over and try to continue with the fight. He's in flames and he should go down from that head on. But will he? He's still fighting. But he does, he does go down. That is a second kill of the Corsair. We are receiving some AAA fire from the back, but that's nothing too serious. And now it's time to hunt for those remaining enemies. The Corsair is actually quite good plane, definitely, in the right hands. For me, does it suit me? Well, not entirely. There's something simply off for me with this aircraft. Sure, you can perform reasonably well with it. You can score some kills and hits and everything, but simply... Something feels a bit off for me, but that's just me. But we are in a good position in this game, there are three more enemies left. And we should finish this game with a victory, hopefully. But first we have to find those enemies. So I'll skip to that part. So welcome back and here we are once again doing our thing, the dot chasing on the, on the screen. There is a little dot in the distance. And hopefully we will be able to catch it and see what it is. And it is an enemy bomber, a Henkel 111. Which, and it should be a relatively easy target for the Corsair. Our six 12.7mm or 50 cal machine guns really should have absolutely no problem dealing with this aircraft. So the standard approach is gain some altitude, then take a right turn, a little bit of a roll, and then dive in on the enemy. And off we are, to a dive. Firing machine guns, scoring hits, the left engine is on fire. Will he go down or do we have to make another pass? Back up. 
and another pass it is. The fire is taken out, put out. We score some more hits. And will he go down? Eventually he does go down. That is the third kill of the Corsair. For the Corsair. And I believe that only one enemy is yet to be found. Actually two enemies are still alive and well and we have to find them and bring them down to win the game. And I believe both of them are actually bombers. So we are in a pretty good position. We are losing by tickets but we should be able to intercept the enemy bombers and take them out and win the game. Our friendlies are gaining speed and are closing the distance towards that Focke Wolf 200 and they should be able to claim that kill. And I do believe that the last enemy should be somewhere near their airport, their base. And the Focke Wolf is taken out and now we simply have to find that remaining enemy. I do believe he's somewhere at their base. So I decide to go back and to have a look. We still have more than enough fuel. Even if you load the minimum amount of fuel in the Corsair you will have plenty for the entire match. And now let's see how the end of this game plays out. He is on the rare field and he is actually taking off. So he should be really slow as he starts to climb once again. Pinging it for the friendlies. And it is only a matter of time till we finally see the last target. The last enemy aircraft. A most likely a bomber. And finally there he is, the remaining enemy. Once again it is a Focke Wolf 200. And he's really slow at this time and actually he probably will not pose much of a threat to us. And he is reasonably easy target. Especially in these conditions. So here comes some 50 kills. He catches fire on a lot of its engines. He is in flames and he's taken out with relative ease. The 50 kills, trace rounds of 50 kills really do deliver. They really are heavy punchers. And that is the end of this game. Four kills. Could have been better, but probably could have been a lot worse. So to sum it up, the F41D is a potent, excellent plane of 3.3 in air realistic battles. But would I choose the P-39 series over him? I actually would. I actually like that plane a whole lot better. But that is my own personal preference, I guess. But that would be all for today. I hope you have liked the video and if you have, please press like and subscribe button. And if you haven't, please do it also because you're a wonderful person. Until the next time, have a fantastic day.